Hey there everybody, today we're talking all about camp kitchens. What sorts of supplies do you need to make your camping experience easier and more relaxing? I've got a bunch of little hacks and tricks for you to try out on your next camping vacation or even if you're a beginner, there's going to be some great advice here for you. Let's go everyone! Jen, welcome to the channel where we are all about living on less in Canada. Camping vacations are one way that you can definitely go on vacation on a shoestring budget as well as kind of simplify your vacationing style. I made a video previous to this one where I talked all about meal ideas and how our family does cooler camping because we are tent campers. And I thought I needed to put another video out that addresses all the sorts of equipment and supplies that I find useful for our camping kitchen as well. So backstory, I used to hate camping. I mean, I really hated camping, you guys. I even didn't love going to summer camp as a kid, maybe because I was homesick, I'm not sure what it was, but I really, really disliked camping. And it wasn't until I changed how I did things and I created a camping experience that felt more like home to me and less foreign that I really started to enjoy myself. So I'm just gonna go through bullet point by bullet point all the things I have in my camp kitchen that you might wanna consider having for yours as well. I'm going to have links for a lot of this stuff down below in my Amazon affiliate links. If you were interested in purchasing them yourself, just follow those links, easy peasy. Okay. The first thing you need to consider when you are camping, especially if you are from Canada, is bugs and wildlife. If you are cooking while you are camping, this needs to be kind of the top of your list for considerations. So the first few times that I went camping, um, we didn't have a screen tent, we didn't have really anything along to keep the bugs away, and I paid for it. Mosquitoes are attracted to me, like, I don't know, I'm a mosquito magnet. And I have two out of my six children that are also extreme mosquito magnets. We blow up with like golf ball sized welts whenever we get stung. And one of the best purchases I ever made for our camp kitchen was a screen tent, a dining tent. So there are a lot of screen tents or dining tents out there that are absolutely massive. And our tent that we sleep in as it is, is really big and so is our vehicle. So I knew I needed to find a screen tent that was a little more compact. So I've linked the one below that we have, which is a Coleman Instatent screen tent. It's super easy to put together. I put it together all by myself when I go camping. My husband takes care of our sleeping tent while I do the dining tent. It's really easy to put up and down. A picnic table easily fits inside of it, as well as my different coolers and totes for food. And it's just about the right size for us. But the other thing I find really important for keeping those bugs away is anything with citronella in it. So in my kitchen tote where I have my non-perishable foods, I always pack some sealed citronella candles that I bring along. And that candle's always burning while I'm cooking on our table or near our campfire, just so that it's keeping those bugs away. We also bring along with us camping tiki torches that have stakes that go into the ground and they're filled with a citronella burning oil. So we will light those tiki torches and this worked really effectively, especially when we were camping in the far north where there's a lot more mosquitoes, black flies, that type of thing. I found that those smoky citronella tiki torches were absolutely essential. Adding to the kind of atmosphere of your camp kitchen, one thing that really helped me was to understand how much light was important to me. So sometimes you're camping and it's getting darker out earlier, or you're up real early in the morning, it's still dark out. So I always make sure I bring just my solar lights from home that are in our flower beds. So these are easy to just take out of the flower beds, pop in a container to come camping with us, and I place them around the outside of our dining tent. First of all, then when people are getting up to go to the washroom in the night, they're not going to trip over the dining tent. And second of all, it just helps for me to be able to see visually if I'm cooking out there. I also have a really good lantern that I use that I'll link below that helps even when we're done with our meal and we're maybe washing dishes or something like that, 
We often camp where there is no electricity, we're on non-electric sites. Having a really good battery powered lantern, LED is awesome, is a great way to go. Okay, so when I get my campsite set up, first of all, we put up our dining tent, we put all of our dining totes inside of it in our coolers and pop that picnic table inside of it. I always, always, always bring a tablecloth for the picnic table. I didn't used to do this and it was so annoying and it was really kind of gross eating off a picnic table that had like dried ketchup on it or that the kids were getting slivers from because it was in such rough shape. Go to the dollar store, get yourself a vinyl or a plastic fun colored tablecloth that you can wipe off easily. You also wanna make sure you purchase clips or have really wide clothespins that you can clip that tablecloth to the table so it doesn't blow off. Just keep it on there your entire camping trip and then dry it off, wipe it down when you go to go home. The other thing I find essential for my camp kitchen is a really good camp stove. So the first time we went camping, we had no camp stove. The second time we went camping, we borrowed an old rickety camp stove. The third time we went camping as a family, I was like, I am buying a good camp stove. And boy, am I glad that I did. We have used our Coleman camp stove over and over and over again. It's going to last a really long time. It was totally worth the investment. I know I'm all about saving money, but this is one area of camping that I would definitely splurge on. We bought like a huge camp stove because I need the ability with eight people in our family, I have six children, and there's often guests and stuff along camping with us. I need the ability to have two or three pots on the go at a time. Why is this important, especially in Canada? Because you can't always have a campfire. Sometimes it's raining. Another reason it's a good idea to have a dining tent is if it's raining, it shelters you from the rain. But a lot of times in the northern part of our provinces, there are fire bans and you can't cook over a fire. So what are you going to do? You need a stove to be able to cook with. You need a stove that can be powered by fuel and not by electricity in case you're remote camping. You also need a stove that has wings at the side in case it's windy so that wind isn't going to interfere with your cooking you're not going to be getting smoke and grease flying everywhere if it's a windy day and to be honest all camp stoves fold up fairly flat a lot of them do ours folds up flat and fits underneath a seat in our van so it doesn't take up that much space to bring along for your kitchen please also consider buying some cast iron cookware this isn't just going to be handy for camping it's going to be handy for your kitchen at home as well. So cast iron cookware can be more expensive. You can also look at a Goodwill store because cast iron lasts, like you'll get a cast iron pan that'll last a hundred years or more. They last forever, so you might be able to find one used at a good price. If you can't and you need to buy them at the store, I bought mine, they're a KitchenAid brand. What's special with the frying pans to me, I have this one and a bit smaller one, but you can kind of see how deep the sides are on it. So that means like I can do up my spaghetti sauce in here, I can do like a chili or a stew because it's got high sides on it, or I can just use it to fry some bacon and eggs. So I have two frying pans, and then I also have a large casserole dish or Dutch oven as it's called. I can use that to boil water for my dishes. I can use it to make pasta noodles. I can use it to make a real big like peach cobbler or something for a dessert. I can make a beef stew with it. I can do anything with that lidded Dutch oven. There are so many recipes online if you just Google Dutch oven recipes for camping, you will be astounded at what you'll find. And I think of everything I've purchased for my camp kitchen, my cast iron cookware pieces are the ones I am the most happy with as a purchase in general. The other thing you really wanna consider camping in Canada is to bring along your own grilling grate for the fire. So a lot of our provincial or national parks, they will have a fire pit that has like a grill that'll fold down but um, those grills are great if there's only two of you camping, but they're not so great if you have a big family. You can fit like two steaks and three baked potatoes in foil on them. You can fit 
almost nothing. So what we did was brought an old barbecue grate from a barbecue that was going to the dump because it was all rusty. The grate inside you can remove and bring it along. Because it's so greasy, we keep it stored in like a paper leaf bag. And again, it can just slide under a seat in a van. And then my husband can balance that across the entire fire pit when we're camping. And we have been able to fit like 20 sausages, a couple huge veggie packs on it. We can fit so much on that barbecue grate. And it's one of the most important components of our camp kitchen and something that is definitely very cheap for you to be able to bring along. Speaking of cooking over the fire, do yourself a favor and purchase some silicone oven mitts as well as some silicone hot pads. These are my everyday, they're a star frit. I use them at home every day and they also always come with us camping. Why? Because they're not gonna start on fire. <laughs> I'm not leaning over a fire pit taking my cast iron Dutch oven out with fabric mitts that could easily start on fire. Silicone is the way to go. You're also gonna wanna bring along utensils for cooking with that are a barbecue size, not the size you'd use at your, on your stove at home. When you bring the barbecue size, you can either use them on your camp stove, so you can bring a spatula, a flipper, tongs along, you can use them on your camp stove, but then they're also long enough and versatile enough that you can use them over the fire. You're not going to want like a short little wooden spoon or short little flipper to use for stuff that's over the fire. And why bring two sets of things, one for your fire pit and one for your camp stove? Just bring a whole set of barbecue tools and that's all you're gonna need. For your camp dishes themselves, I highly recommend investing in something that's like a plastic, an acrylic, or a stainless steel. If you bring along glassware or things that are easily breakable, you're gonna regret it, especially if you have kids. It's really hard on a campsite to not break stuff like that, and you do not want broken pieces of pottery on the ground on your campsite. You just don't. But what if you can't afford to just go out and buy a set like that at Canadian Tire or Walmart or wherever it is you might find them? Check out a Goodwill store. Go to your local Salvation Army Value Village and see if you can find some really fun plastic, acrylic, stainless steel dishes that you can create a camping collection from. Goodwill stores also have lots of old utensils, things like that that you can bring along. So I recommend instead of bringing your dishes that you use for every day at home, have just a camping picnic basket that you always have those camping dishes in and then it's easy when you go to pack for camping that it's just all there in the bucket already. You don't have to gather things from your kitchen at home. Coolers. I've mentioned this in my video about all the meals that we're prepping, which I will link for you, but I always use a hard-sided cooler and I have also been known to sometimes bring soft-sided coolers for the things we're going to be eating at the beginning of the camp vacation that it doesn't matter how long they stay cool. But I do find that a good quality hard-sided cooler will keep your food cooler much longer and they're really easy just to pick up by their handles and sock into your vehicle or safe storage every night. Things you do not want to forget which are commonly forgotten when you go camping are garbage bags. Fill a garbage bag with all your food scraps every day and dispose of it every day. Do not keep that garbage bag out during the night. How do I know this? I don't know. There's probably been a few nights where I've been camping where there's a raccoon party going on outside my tent where they're fighting over our garbage because we forgot to put it away for the night. Don't forget garbage bags. Don't forget dish soap and cloths and towels for doing your dishes. We also like to bring lots of rope to string between trees so that we can hang our dish towels, our washcloths, that type of thing. You don't need a ton of dish soap, but like just a travel size container is perfect. I also have often forgotten to bring cooking oil. That's something that now I just keep a little jar of cooking oil always in my camp supplies bucket. So I have a bucket that's all non-perishables. So in there for camping is always going to be a container of dish soap, a container of cooking oil, as well as salt and pepper and baby wipes. Baby wipes are definitely necessary if you have kids and they're having s'mores and it's just a crazy sticky muddy mess. So those are four things that are just always packed in my special tote for my camp kitchen. On the topic of washing dishes, don't forget to also bring a container 
for doing your dishes. A lot of people go out and buy a special tub and a drying rack tray for camping for doing your dishes. But you know what I use? I just use a Rubbermaid tote, a really big one, and I use the lid of the tote as the draining rack. So I would maybe use that tote to pack for camping, maybe say the toys and books that my kids are bringing that are gonna be kept inside of our tent for the nights. And that is a tote that will also double as my dishwashing tote. So as much as you can, think of things that could be double use. And the other must-haves obviously are roasting sticks for roasting things over the fire. We also use cast iron pie irons for baking or cooking things in, as well as a whole lot of tin foil. I don't normally use a lot of tin foil in my cooking at home. I don't want to be too wasteful, but for camping, it really is almost an essential. Okay, so now you know, that is how I equip our camp kitchen. That's how I make it feel more at home and more convenient for myself. So let me know in the comments below what your must-haves are for camping if you're a camper or if you just have any questions for me, let me know. I love to interact with you, the viewer. I'm gonna link a playlist coming right up that's all about camping. I go over a lot of different topics like our gear for tenting, as well as how to book a campsite online, as well as cooking and meal ideas. So be sure to check that playlist out if it's a topic you're really interested in. Coming up later this summer, I'm hoping to take you all camping with me so you can see what a camping trip with our big family really consists of and the sorts of things we do and how we make it fun. I can't wait to see you in my next video. For the least, this is Jen.